last straw. I'm done with Amelia, my good-for-nothing evil twin. My name is Anna, and I think it's about time I told everyone all the horrible things Amelia has done to me over the years. Growing up, I always felt like everything my sister did was purely to make my life a living hell. Imagine this. The very first day of high school, my twin sister and I got on the school bus. And because of her flashy clothes and perfect makeup, people literally flocked around her. I mean, we were identical twins. But she somehow always managed to look a thousand times better. Which was all okay until she did the worst thing. She smiled widely at the crowd and said, Hello everyone, I'm Amelia and this is my very own maid. With that, she accidentally pushed me and all my books onto the floor. She pretended to help me, but the damage was done. I was so humiliated. I've never forgotten everyone laughing at me. A few weeks after starting school, Amelia already had a huge group of friends, while I was totally alone. One time during recess, she came to my locker with her friends to make fun of me. But the thing was, she didn't really say anything. She just hung back and let her gang insult me. I had had enough. I was ready to give them a piece of my mind. So I stood my ground and answered back. Immediately, she jumped in to defend me. Leave my poor sister alone, she yelled. It's not her fault she's so weird and ugly. My sister was a bully through and through. Another time, when I was walking home after school, a girl caught up with me and started walking next to me. I was pretty surprised when I realized who it was. Hey, I'm Jenny, she said. Oh, I know you, I replied. You're from Amelia's lovely group of friends, aren't you? What do you want? She put a hand on my arm. I'm sorry, Anna. I don't like tormenting you. My friends don't really listen to me, but I won't bug you anymore. I'd like to get to know you better. For a second, I almost believed that she meant it. But then I shook her hand off my arm and started walking away quickly. No thanks. I was pretty sure Amelia's friends were just as two-faced as she was. I wasn't falling for Jenny's acting. All this aside, what made things really tough for me was that my parents didn't help matters one bit. My mom was a fashion model, and seeing Amelia's dedication to fashion, she acted like Amelia could do no wrong. My dad was pretty cool, but he was usually too busy with work to notice much else around him. It was usually me and my teddy against the world. Some weeks later, it was mom and dad's wedding anniversary, and I was psyched. I stayed up all night making a cake for the special occasion. I wanted to give my parents the best cake ever. The next day, as soon as the party began, I placed it on a cart and started wheeling it out towards where everyone was talking. On my way, I saw Amelia standing at the other end of the kitchen. She had such an annoyingly smug look on her face that I felt like running her over with the car. Uh-huh, not a bad idea, I thought. As I walked past her, I accidentally ran the car over her toe, just a teeny bit. She screamed and suddenly threw herself at me. To my horror, she kicked the cake and all my hard work from the past night smashed onto the ground. Amelia laughed loudly. Then, very slowly, she bent down, stuck her finger in the frosting, and put it in her mouth. She frowned and then spat the rest on my face before walking out. I was so shocked that I burst into tears. My surprise gift was ruined, and everyone was waiting for me outside. I had no other option but to go out and tell them there was no cake. Squaring my shoulders, I walked out when I heard everyone gasping and wowing at something. It must have been something amazing, as mom and dad were grinning ear to ear. I rushed out to check what it was. What I saw blew me away. There, in the center of the room, was Amelia with, I kid you not, a cart that had a three-tier cake from a fancy bakery. What a damn pain! She stood beside it, looking so polished, fresh, and beautiful. I mean, she was practically sparkling. I stood in place, feeling messy and ugly. Once everyone was done worshiping Amelia, she walked up to me and ever so sweetly said, Why, Anna, you look like a truck ran over you. Then Amelia whispered, you don't have to be like that because of a silly cake. Can't you see how happy mom and dad are? Besides, who would even believe your story, loser? All I wanted was for the night to be over so I could tell mom and dad what Amelia had done. But when mom saw the smashed cake, she just laughed and said, Well, I can't complain. The cake we had was amazing. Honestly, it seemed like every day she was turning more and more evil. All she was missing was a black hat and a broomstick. But thankfully, I had finally made a best friend, Mandy, and she was always there for me. Mandy and I had randomly become friends. She just started hanging out with me and listening to my rants. Best of all, she was the most encouraging person ever. She was so determined to have me show everyone that I was great, that she practically forced me to join the school swim team and sign up for the next competition. 
Then she made me train nonstop. She said that I should focus all the neglect and anger into it. And I just did that. On the day of the competition, I just knew I was going to win. All the contestants were at the starting line, waiting for the referee signal. When something strange happened, he announced that there was a last minute entry. I rolled my eyes. Can we get on with it now? I've got a race to win, I thought to myself. But then, almost in slow motion, a figure appeared and the crowd parted. The host screamed into the mic, and here is our final contestant. The crowd actually cheered. I mean, really? I wanted to gag. But when I saw who the contestant was, I nearly passed out. It was, you guessed it, Amelia. She had literally told me that only losers participated in swimming competitions, and now she'd shown up like some sort of celebrity to compete? Was she kidding me? The race started, and just as I thought I would win, Amelia suddenly sped up and overtook me like she'd been practicing for months. I was so bummed out. And Mandy was nowhere to be found. Over the weekend, though, I did find her. On my way back from the library, I saw Amelia with some other girls, obviously shopping with the prize money. I turned on my heel to avoid them until I saw who else was with them. Mandy! My best friend, Mandy! She was laughing and chilling with Amelia and her girl goons like they were all BFFs. I approached them and tried to talk to Mandy. But when she saw me, she pointed at me and started laughing. Then Amelia walked up to me like the drama queen she was and tossed a few notes in my face. I picked up one and gasped. These were the notes I'd written to Mandy complaining about Amelia. Everything made sense now. Amelia had pushed Mandy to be my friend. She had wanted to participate just so she could beat me. I was furious. I stormed up to Mandy and asked if I could talk to her. Obviously, she said no. But just as she was about to launch into a rant about how big a loser I was, I lost it. Out of nowhere, I swung around and kicked her. Screw you, Mandy, I said as I walked away. That very moment, I decided never to trust anyone again. If I didn't trust them, they couldn't hurt me, right? But then I met Jeff, and I thought that everything had changed. I was in the science lab when a tall figure approached me and towered over my head. He spoke softly to me and asked if he could join me to work on an experiment. After we did, I expected him to keep his distance. But to my surprise, Jeff seemed to genuinely like me. We started doing things together. We did our homework together. We became almost inseparable. And one day, as we were eating lunch, I looked into his warm brown eyes and realized I had the hugest crush on him. To my delight, a week before the school prom, Jeff asked if I would go with him. On prom night, I was beyond happy. To my surprise, when Jeff came to pick me up, Amelia stayed home watching TV. A whole night without Amelia trying to mess it up? Maybe the universe was finally being fair. But I was so wrong. After arriving, Jeff suddenly said he had to go deal with something and he'd be right back. While I was waiting, I decided to take a walk outside. What I saw left me shook. I found Amelia and my Jeff making out by the pool. And some people were cheering them on like they were a newlywed couple. I couldn't believe it. Tears welled up in my eyes as they broke apart. I walked over to them slowly. I wanted to ask Jeff just one thing. Why? But before I could get a word out, Amelia turned to me and smirked. As a huge crowd was standing around us, she quickly did her good sister routine. Oh, Anna! You won't believe this, but I think I'm in love. We just met, but I feel like I found my soulmate. And best of all, his name is Jeff too. I glared at them. She was just going to pretend that this was a different Jeff? I turned to Jeff. So, are you going to pretend this is a different Anna, too? I asked him angrily. He laughed and said there was no way anyone would ever confuse her for me. I let out a sob, and anger boiled inside of me. I grabbed a cup of punch and threw it on Jeff. Take that, you jerk! I turned away and started running back home. I was crying so much that I could barely see a thing. And I bumped into someone. It was Jenny. She had witnessed the whole scene, and she just hugged me. It's going to be okay, Anna, she said softly, patting me on the back as I sobbed away. No, it won't. I will always have my vile sister to deal with. Thankfully, some months later, I was admitted to a college far from home and far from Amelia. The last few months at home had been almost unbearable. The only good thing in my life at that time was my friendship with Jenny. We had become close, and I was really going to miss her but I was ready for a new life without Amelia. In college, I thought I would finally be happy. I even managed to make some friends of my own. 
and I was thrilled that there would be no Amelia to ruin my happiness. After my first year on campus, I moved to a house outside the school, and that was where I met Brad. Or, as I like to call him, Brad McTramey. He lived a few houses away from mine. There was a small problem, though. I had fallen for him almost from the first time I'd seen him. But he was a bit distant. He barely looked at me. I was slightly disappointed, but I hoped he'd come around. I didn't have to wait long, though. One day after class, as I was walking home alone, a car started following me. I was terrified. I tried to see who was driving, but the headlights were very strong and I couldn't see anything. I ran home and the car waited outside my house for five minutes. I didn't want to stay alone, so I called Brad. When he finally picked up, he said he'd just gotten home. He had been out with a friend for coffee. I told him what had happened and he immediately offered to come over. Suddenly, I wasn't terrified. I was thrilled. Brad stayed up the whole night with me, constantly checking to see if the car came back. It didn't. But seeing how eager Brad was to help me, I practically melted. This was such a change. After that, Brad and I became really chummy. We would often video chat for hours. One night, we talked for three. I went to sleep right after, and the next morning, I saw the call was still running. Apparently, Brad had left his camera on by mistake. Or was it a mistake? I thought to myself, giggling. At first, I thought I should end the call, but I also really wanted to stay and watch him. It was breakfast time, and he was walking around without a shirt on. He was such a babe. Seeing what he was doing, though, had me rolling on the floor in laughter. He was dancing around to metal music while he prepared breakfast. At one point, he jumped onto the sofa, grabbed a shirt, and waved it over his head. I got my bowl of cereal and happily sat in front of the computer again. I was totally up for watching The Brad Show all day. Soon after, I saw him checking a text on his phone, and he got up and left the room for a bit. When he came back, he was in different clothes. He grabbed his keys and phone and left. To my disappointment, oh well, he'll be back. I was trying to finish up an assignment when I saw that he had returned, and he didn't look happy. He threw his keys on the table and sat down on the sofa, letting out a huge sigh. What a day! I heard him mutter to himself. He had been in such a good mood that morning. I was so curious about what had happened. Well, I got my answer soon enough. And it was nothing I could have expected. Not in a million years! When I saw what happened next, I screamed and fell off my chair. Somebody just barged in through the door. It was Amelia! Amelia! She wasn't wearing her flashy clothes or layers of makeup. In fact, she looked exactly like me. Except, I know that's not me! I got back up in my chair, shaking and staring at the screen in horror. Anna, what are you doing here? Brad had jumped up from the sofa, and he looked really uncomfortable. Did he just call her Anna? My head was spinning. Oh, Brad, you just ran out of there. Please, give me a chance to explain, Amelia said between sobs. I was all too familiar with her acting skills to know that the tears weren't real. There's nothing to explain. You proposed to me on one knee in front of the entire coffee shop. And you were screaming and holding onto my leg when I said no. You're insane, Anna. This was so embarrassing. I had heard enough. My blood was boiling. I didn't even know how Amelia had found Brad or how she knew I liked him. She'd been pretending to be me and acting like a lunatic. It was all so over the line. I didn't wait around to hear what Amelia was saying next. I stormed off to Brad's house to confront her. To my surprise, the house was empty. Things were all over the place. Clearly, something bad had happened. Neither Brad nor Amelia were there. I ran around the house looking for them. No sign of anyone. Then I saw that a table near the stairs was toppled over. What had happened here in the five minutes it took me to come over? I went upstairs and saw Amelia dragging Brad across the floor. I gasped. She was trying to stuff Brad into the closet. I have to get out of here. I have to save Brad. I have to clear my name. I quietly went downstairs and tried to make a call. But just as I picked up the phone, I heard Amelia laughing behind me. Damn it! I turned around in shock and asked Amelia if she was nuts. You are taking this too far, Ames! I yelled at her. I told her everything I had seen and heard on the computer. She roared at me. She knew the gig was up. Then, before I knew what was happening, she grabbed a knife from the fruit ball on the table and attacked me. She looked at me with hate-filled eyes and said, I hate being a twin! I hate sharing! Especially with a loser like you! This life and this world are mine, Anna. You can't have them. You've got to go. Then she jumped at me. I managed to get away from her, but she was fast, and she had me cornered soon enough. She stood over me, and I closed my eyes. 
knowing the end was near, when suddenly the police barged in. Thank God. Apparently, the neighbors had heard the commotion and called the police. I was saved. It didn't take long for them to take Amelia away. Brad was taken to the hospital. Amelia was found to be unstable and taken to an institution. My parents managed to keep everything hushed up. When Brad finally woke up, he looked around completely confused. The minute he set his eyes on me, he started screaming in terror. Get this mad woman out of here! I want a restraining order! Someone help! As the nurses rushed in to calm him down, I sighed and left the room. I don't think Brad and I will be dating anytime soon.